Hello and welcome to Engineering Simple. In this video, I'll talk about transformer core. Transformer, the transformer's heart is core and coil, and co uh, core and coils. The core is mainly there to maintain the flux, so it does not leak out. So three phase. Let's assume we have a three phase transformer with three leg core. So the flux density is 1.65 Tesla. So what is the magnetic flux? So let's assume we have a core, a three leg core. Let me just get the highlighter. So here's one leg. Here's another leg. Here's another leg. This is top yoke, and this is the bottom yoke that join the core legs. So we know that the magnetic flux is equal to flux density times the cross-section area of the core. Just to make things simple, let's assume the core is rectangular. So the cross-section area is just 20 centimeters times 20 centimeters which is 0 0.04 meters squared because you always want to pay attention to units you want to use universal units so that you are not off by factors so i'll go back to this formula here and i plug in numbers i get 0 0.066 weaver so we know from, from electromagnetics the RMS, the induced RMS voltage is equal to number of turns times the derivative of the flux with respect to time, which is equal to number of turns because we know flux is just flux density times the cross section area. And we, uh, since area is just a constant, it's, it does not change with time, we can take it out of the derivative. So it's just number of turns times the cross-section area of the core times the derivative of the flux density, basically. Since we are applying a sinusoidal voltage, the flux, the flux density will be, the flux will be sinusoidal. So we can write it in the form of max flux density times the cosine of 2 pi f t. F is frequency, T is just time, and since uh, V max is just a number, so it doesn't change, so I can get it out. So it's uh, number of turns times cross section area times max B or B max times, and the derivative of cosine 2 pi F T with respect to time is just 2 pi times f, time is negative sign, but we're just talking about magnitude here, so we will not worry about uh, signs, so sine 2 pi ft. So this is RMS voltage. If I want the max voltage, basically I'll just set sine of this quantity here to 1. So it's just V max is just number of turns times cross-section area times B max times 2 pi F. I will divide both sides of this equation by square root of 2. So V max divided by square root of 2 equal 2 pi F and a B max divided by square root of 2. Since it's a sinusoid of voltage V max divided by square root of 2 is just V RMS. And if I just do 2 times pi times F is just 60 hertz divided by square root of 2 is just 4.44 times F times N times A times B max. I can rearrange this. To calculate B max, so B max is equal to V RMS divided by 4.44 times frequency times the number of turns times T 
the cross-section area of the core. So this is an important equation that can be used in calculating the max flux density and it can also be used to calculate the cross-section of the core. So let's do an example. So we have a single phase transformer. So the primary side is 7200 volts and the secondary side is 277 volts. It's 60 hertz frequency. Number of turns in the secondary winding is 20. So the cross section area of the core is rectangular, so it's 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. So let's calculate the number of turns in the primary winding. So the cross-section area is just 20 centimeters times 20 centimeters is just 0.04 meters squared. So the flux density is just PRMS of the secondary divided by 4.44 times frequency times the number of turns in the secondary times the cross-section area of the core. And note here, the voltage I'm using secondary, I have to use turns, number of turns in the secondary. So I have to be consistent. So if I put in the numbers, I get 1.3 Tesla. So this equation here, I used it with VRMS in the secondary winding divided by number of turns in the secondary winding. I can use the same formula here, except I can replace VRMS secondary with VRMS primary and number of turns in the secondary with number of turns in the primary. And if I put in, if I rearrange then it, then number of turns in the primary is just VRMS primary divided by 4.44 times frequency times B max times cross section area of the core. And if I plug in the numbers, I get 520 turns. Well, again, if I do a quick check, does that make sense? Yes. The high, the high, the side with the the high voltage will have will have the uh, the highest number of turns. So 520 turns versus 20 turns, so that makes sense. Another way of calculating number of turns in the primary, I can just use this equation here that I shown in a different video. It's volts per turn. So the volts per turn in the primary is equal to the volts per turn in the secondary winding. Then number of turns in the primary is just the Voltage in the primary winding times the number of turns in the secondary winding divided by the voltage in the secondary winding. So I get the same number. Thank you for watching this video and have a great day.